Welcome to the Blackout Podcast, where I get to talk to amazing people who do amazing things. And today I have comedian, super awesome, really, really interesting person. And I always laugh whenever we talk. Trina James, thanks for coming to the podcast thanks today. Thanks for having me. Okay, so like, um, I love comedy mm-hmm. and I love laughing and I have a weird laugh. Okay. <laughs> but like, when, I, I guess for you, when did this whole comedy thing start? Like... How did it even start? Um, so I started, I'll start by saying I've always liked comedy. Comedy has always been something I've always been into, like watching a lot of the sets that you'd see on um, SNL and things of that nature. So I've always been attracted or into comedy in some form. Mm-hmm. And I feel like writing comedy myself started more in 2018. And it started with a lot of my friends just kind of found me funny. Um, and then I decided to just start writing it down and it turned into a really fun outlet for me to help navigate a lot of things I was dealing with um, at that point in time, whether it be like mental health, just coming to terms with who I am in terms of my identity, um, mm. just navigating that new step in life that many of us do in our 20s. Uh, mm. but that's how it about started. Okay, so whenever like, you know, comedians are talking on stuff, they always say, you know, I'm writing material and stuff. And... I never knew that they actually literally sit down and write this stuff. Yes. What is your own process when it comes to writing? That is a good question. So I, because a lot of the things that I come up with just kind of hit me at any given time, I'm the type of person that has a note stock in their um, phone. And for me, my joke writing process always starts backwards, if that makes sense. I so like, it. I will come up with the punchline first and then oh. everything leading up to the punchline is will happen after you know what like yeah. i write films that's how i write like i i can't write this st- the thing until i know how it ends so yes. yeah 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 i like yeah. that i like that okay so you'd be like oh fuck that's funny but yes. how do i get myself there yes. is it always like long or once you know the punchline you know how to get there it it depends on the joke if i'm being frank mm-hmm. um like i have some jokes where it's just the punchline and then i just need something to get me to the punchline mm-hmm. and then a lot of the jokes that are more center around like I'm telling a story about something that actually happened it will yes I'll have the main punchline of the joke but it's a bit longer and maybe there's a bit more jokes that I created on the way that are meld within the joke itself yeah okay so I mean you you say things are funny and your friends say are funny yes but like (laughs) did you ever have any doubt that you know your friends are just gassing you up or uh yeah of course (laughs) (laughs) but I will say thankfully I have friends who will also call me out when I'm not funny right Um, like there are some things that I've written and it's just like maybe Trina this is not for (laughs) this is an inside thought Trina this is not for public public knowledge (laughs) And you don't hear those. Those become right. a secret. Um, but yeah. And then, do do you have like any comedic influences? Uh, yeah, I love Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes is my favorite on um, so many levels. Right. Um, I also really, even though I wouldn't say Queen Latifah is a comedian, I feel like she has comedic charm that she carries within her um her roles that she'll play in a lot of film and TV shows. So I do love um, Queen Latifah. Um, I like Mark Lawrence, like old school stuff. Uh, Eddie Murphy's old school stuff. Uh, those are like my top ones in terms of comedians that are international or like well-known. I Wait, do have, like, Eddie more- Murphy with the gloves and the red outfit? All of, all of the old Eddie Murphy clips, all of the old like Martin Lawrence, I think a lot of their stuff are really, really great, especially because you get to see them as comedians during like their raw early stages before you like see them as people we see today, which are like really famous actors who've put out a lot of great work. But yeah. you know, you're mentioning all these people and they're kind of like old school. Yeah. Is, you, is, are there any like modern comedians? Modern comedians? Uh, I feel like all the modern comedians I can think of are people or local or Canadian can- comedians that I've seen either on social media or just kind of 
online. And mm. one thing I really like about them or a lot of the upcoming comedians is that, yes, we're still comedic, but a lot of people are tying in the politics behind it. And I think that's a big reason why I started writing comedy where a lot of my comedies are my art form is centered around is yes there's funny but you're gonna learn something about whether it be navigating the world being a black person or navigating the world being a queer person or just like how different forms of oppression have impacted the way we think about certain things mm. and why we deem certain things okay in comparison to other things being okay and i love using comedy as a way to to get that message across because you're laughing and then you'll sit back and be like huh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that is actually different. It sounds to me, maybe it's easy to, <laughs> yeah, it sounds easy. Like, you know, versus just, I'm just going to say something and make people laugh. Yeah. But like, you know, sliding a message in there, mm -hmm. is that more difficult than? I don't think it's difficult for me. And that's mainly because I've always had to use a comedic charm to get my message across in oh. general, whether it's me navigating everyday life, navigating strangers as a place of trying to be safe or remain safe in specific situations, right. having to be as charismatic as possible. So for someone like me where I've had to use wordplay and be as funny um, in situations that are kind of high tense or kind of awkward, not so much. Now it's more intentional and it can be um, take the time to really think about what I'm trying to get across instead of trying to just get through a situation. Right, yeah. right. I mean, it's one of those things where if you don't experience it, you don't even think, think of about it. Think about it, you yeah. Know? You know, yeah, wow, that hit me hard. Okay, so um, <laughs> you, 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 you talk, you know, you see things and your friends are like, you're funny, I'm like, okay, I'm writing it. Did you have any issues with actually getting on a stage? Was there any stage fright? Uh, okay. And if there wasn't, how do you overcome that? Because I struggle with that. Stage fright. Okay, I definitely still have a lot of stage fright. Um, I don't think... Sometimes it comes across, sometimes it doesn't. Um, when I'm performing, I think the first like couple minutes of being on stage, it's like, okay, I'm about to talk to a crowd of people <laughs> and let's hope they laugh at something that I say because if not, uh, this is gonna be really awkward and it's just gonna be me um, saying a long monologue about all my problems in life and maybe someone's gonna laugh. But mm. in terms of how I cope with um, stage fright, um, I practice a lot of my sets and I like to run through it in different spaces where I know I'll get the reaction that is needed for me to get the criticism that I need to fix the joke before, I guess, going to a stage where um, I want a set that's going to be strong and going to come have the message that I need to come across, come across, mm -hmm. um, is how I do it. But How do you practice? So, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> My practicing setup is very confusing. So, I'm an early morning person. Yeah. Um, it's also when I get a lot of my writing done. So, if I have uh, a gig or a show coming up, I will practice before, like, getting ready in the day. Um, at least once, a, sorry, at least once during the week. Um, and if not that, I like to... The entire set or... Um, if it's not saying the set verbatim, it's like memorizing the joke orders so that I have an idea of what I want to say. And then there is a me running through the set either with a friend or like verbally in the shower, <laughs> <laughs> like in the washroom by myself when the doors close. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely, at least I practice comedian or plastic comedian. That makes no sense. <laughs> I practice my comedy. Um, I do know there's a lot of comedians that can just like improvise, which is something I'm hoping to expand more on. Um, like just going on to a stage and like having a general idea of what you're going to talk about. But a lot of this is just improvised jokes. Mm. I'm not that person. I like to have a set and then maybe I'll go off script to talk to the crowd. Um, but I know what I'm going to say right after. And mm. that's intentional. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, uh, hecklers, do you ever do? I love hecklers. <laughs> Come, please, y'all are, you are the reason why I'm able to practice improv. Why? Um, I think it comes from, I was, I think a lot of us have our like sad stories of like being bullied in school and stuff like that. Mm. And I feel like me talking to a heckler is my form of, you know, healing my inner child. <laughs> How throwing back the comments I would have loved to say to the bullies I knew in school, but didn't have the guts or the charisma at the time. Mm. Um, so that's why I like hecklers. Um, and 
to be honest, if you're going to draw attention to yourself in a set, I'm going to make you regret it. And the best way possible. Um, <laughs> not that I welcome hecklers, but I'll put you in your place. <laughs> Do, does, like, you know, talking about heckler make anyone come to mind? Uh, I'm trying to think of a situation where I was heckled and it really, I guess, threw me off in a way. Um, I feel like there was one person who heckled at a, it was a show that was an all women or just not men show that happened at Gus's pub in the city. And, um, this person was just heckling most of the time. Like he was interjecting or commenting on every single person's set. So oh. when my time came, it was just like, well, I've, I've had time to think about all, all the, the things, things I can say to you. So sir, if you speak, it's game over. <laughs> um, and he did, and he was put in his place. Um, nothing I would say here, cause you know, it's very spicy commentary <laughs> that we had, but uh, I, think okay. he, I think he learned from all of the comedians that night that he should not speak at right. a comedy show, unless spoken to. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so, I mean, you practice, you do your writing yeah. in the morning, ETC. But have you ever had a set that was just like, people just didn't laugh? Um, have I ever had a set where people didn't laugh? Maybe they didn't laugh as hard as I wanted to. This is my, maybe this is my problem or my, um, what I should work on is working on knowing when they're just not going to do it. Because my problem is if I don't think a joke is going to land or if a joke doesn't land, I'm fishing... I'm gonna make you laugh. I'm gonna stress this out. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep saying things, and you're gonna. I'm gonna start throwing I'm gonna pass at the it. wall and see what sticks. <laughs> I'm gonna find it. So I think that's why I'm like I haven't had a set where I completely bombed where no one laughed because mm. it's just like I'm gonna keep talking. I'm gonna find a way. I'm gonna find a way to make you laugh. <laughs> and if I have to pull for that one joke that I've said so many times, but I know someone's gonna laugh, mm. I'm gonna do it because mm. I'm not leaving until one person laughs. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. So, um, I mean, you you get on the stage. How long have you been doing this now? And what are some of the um, sh shows that you really had a wonderful time? Um, so I've been performing in general, uh, I guess since like 2019-ish. And then I feel like when I moved to Halifax is when I did it more intentional. Mm. Um, like going to a bit more open mics or going to a bit more comedy shows. Favorite space to do comedy is, I'm going to be honest and say Foggy Goggles. Um, oh. They used to host the Foggy Funnies Nights. It was hosted by Megan McCracken. Um, great comedian, great artist in general, great space cultivator. I'll even go to that extent and sing. Um, but that's not a thing anymore. That mm. was my favorite space. But if it's not there, I really like going to the Red Room in Dartmouth. They do a... Friday, pay what you can show um, at the art um, art gallery there, and it's called the Red Room Riot. Great space, great show. Wait, um, is that not the show you? No, the show that I'm doing on the 27th is at um, the Dark Side Comedy, which is at right. Double Tree Hotel, if I'm not mistaken. I always get the hotel name wrong, but that's where they host it. Right by the bridge, right? Yes, right, right. by the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine. There's like an office thing mm -hmm. right by the hotel i was like wow your hotel your, your office is here and the hotel is like okay so comedy has you know okay i'm just saying there are people that are like on the internet the internet is just a cesspool but the internet <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but there are people that are on and saying like oh comedy is too woke you can't say some things and all that stuff what do you have to say about that? Um, get over it. That's me personally. And I think the reason why I come in with that approach and I recognize that not all comedians may have share the same opinion as me, um, no matter where they fall on the political spectrum, but I have always approached any form of art that I'm doing, whether it be comedy, whether it be dance, poems, it is political. No matter what you do, you are putting out something that is going to be interpreted by people and I think as an artist mm. it makes sense for me to use my art to yes get my story across but recognize that it's a piece of it's political my art mm. is political um so yeah for people who think that comedy is getting too woke that's cute we also used to think that about institutions we also used to think that about a lot of things or a lot of aspects of our society and it wasn't until we shifted the way we looked at um the way we were doing things did we make some sense of change so that's mm. my piece. So those were like comedies getting too po um, political. 
fine, go find a racist comedian and laugh at him. And then, I mean. Go find a misogynist comedian and laugh at him. I'm not that person and mm, I will never be that person. So. Yeah. You know, talking of that, uh, one of the, I guess, flashpoints in the last couple of, you know, in recent history is uh, uh, Dave Chappelle. Yes. Um, and I knew you were going to talk about Dave Chappelle. I'm like, <laughs> there's no way we're going to have a comedy podcast and Dave Chappelle's not going to come up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so he he's like, ha- he had that and, um, you know, Netflix paid him a ton of money. Like, mm-hmm. there was this whole thing happening. What were your feelings and thoughts during that period? I'm going to be frank. I'm going to say I'm not surprised. Like, I am not surprised that Netflix signed a contract or made went through the process of producing the show with Dave Chappelle. I am not surprised that Dave Chappelle did this either because that has just always been the way he's done comedy. He's always just been very blunt and upfront about how he is talking about whether it be people who are um, um, using drugs or talking about a wide variety of groups of people. So when that set came up, I wasn't surprised by how he reacted, wasn't surprised how by how the trans community reacted, and I feel rightfully so. They have every right to feel any form of negative reaction towards um, Dave Chappelle. Um, Do I feel like um, a lot of networks should think about the artists and the types of art that they're putting access or putting online? Definitely, of course, but are they going to? Definitely not, because at the end of the day, a lot of these um, TV or even just like production companies are trying to create content for people to um, consume no matter where they fall in the political spectrum. And they need to make that money. Yeah, it's all about the money at the end (laughs) of the day. So not surprised, not shocked. Right, right. Here we are. Um, Okay, so you are a black person. Mm -hmm. No. (laughs) I was like... Oh my God, how? How? How did you know? It's I mean, I didn't even have my glasses on, <laughs> but I can kind of tell. You can just tell. That's great. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. I thought I actually was an alien <laughs> from Mars specifically. So thank you for letting me know I'm a black person. <laughs> and, you know, um, you know, you present as female. Yes. And it's just like, in general, life is difficult for a black woman, right? But in comedy, I just feel it's like even more difficult. Is that been something you've experienced? And if you have, how do you handle that? Uh, it's it's definitely something I've experienced. Or and I think it just stems from why a lot of people who look like me, whether it be black, whether it be queer, don't will be strategic about what type of comedy spaces they're entering. And I think maybe that's where a lot of my experience have come from. Will I say I really like the comedy community in Halifax in terms of how a lot of people have been open and giving me access to it and making me feel comfortable to make jokes? The types of jokes that I'm making on stage, yes. But will I say that um, comedy in general, especially in Halifax or just in any city, is it still dominated by a lot of white men and what that means for people who are wanting to come to a show and watch a show? Does it make them feel hesitant? Yes, because a lot of the topics that a lot of the comedians talk about, which we've already mentioned before, um, tend to isolate or make certain groups that look like me feel a little isolated, feel a little uncomfortable, so they're not going to come to a show. Mm. And I feel like those, I've dealt with more of that and I feel like harp more on that experience because when I go out in public, even like the other day, um, I was just at just a local bar and someone came up to me and they're like, oh, are you the real gay nun? And was just like, I really like, I don't really like comedy, but I really like some of the things that you're doing and I think it's really fun. And it reminds me that it makes sense that there's comedians like myself and there's others like myself in the city to continue to do work like this or Mm. continue to just express ourselves in our art form because you're bringing people back to a form that they weren't really interested in because it was just used to bully or isolate their community. Mm, mm. And talking about the real game, though, what's the story behind that name? I freaking <laughs> love that handle. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, I reached out, so the, the stories, I reached out to Travis. Lindsay, shout out, Travis. Yes, Dude Travis, is funny. Travis is hilarious. Travis, goals. Um... You wish you could be Travis. <laughs> and then, uh, um, you know, and it's like, I need to talk to you. And then 
I saw this handle, I'm like laughing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the real game, though, was a story there. Yeah, so it started as a, a joke with me and my friend, and um, I was glad that she was down to, like, pretend to be gay nuns with me for Halloween. But um, in all honesty, I've always just been a person who, like, I was raised in the church. I was raised... Um, in a Pentecostal church, I went to a Catholic school, so we got all forms of Catholicism in this beautiful body here. Um, and one thing that I've always liked or admire about Christianity in certain aspects is that it reminds a lot of people that they should just be a good person. Do I recognize that Christianity has been a colonial tool to you, to enforce a lot of harm on a lots of groups of people? Yes, and do I think it's important for us to keep that in mind? Of course, um, but one thing that still sits with me is that Christianity has always been, or God and Jesus has always been a root of grounding myself, especially the gospel music. Gospel music is something I still listen to when I'm sad. Also something I listen to when I'm happy and I'm trying to like sit in my blessings and all the great things are being like poured into my cup. Um, mm -hmm. So with that all being said, I forever and always will be a gay nun. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the church won't accept me, um, <laughs> me and my habit <laughs> and my rainbow flags. Yeah. Okay, so um, talking about like you know the Chappelle and world comedy and stuff, something that also came is like cancel culture, mm -hmm. and I'm curious what's your thoughts on cancel culture. Um, it's I'm that's such oh look at you, you got me, <laughs> you done got me. <laughs> oh. I will say this when it comes to cancel culture. Um, everyone's each their own when it comes to cancel culture. When it comes to me, I am more into trying my best to call a person in or like trying to my best to correct the behavior and mapping out where I lie on canceling or keeping a person after that, mm. if that makes sense. So mm. I'm not a, I'm writing you off completely, but I'm gonna check in with you and let you know why this didn't make no sense and why it should be addressed differently. And the only reason why I approach it that way is because I'd hope that if I were ever in a situation where I've done something to harm a person or a community that I would be given the space to be corrected mm. or to be called out or called in in whatever way a person can correct me and like assess how my reaction is from there. Mm. So um, I watch too much TV. <laughs> 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 and like, um, one of the things that came up recently is uh, this artist, she says she's Japanese. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of this, but basically, uh, oh, what's her name? I'm really scared. Hollaback girl. No, no, no. Oh, Gwen Stefani. Yeah, yeah. So oh. she she had an interview where, <laughs> um, yeah, where you know it came out like she said she was Japanese and it just be, you know the internet became a big big thing and then it brought up culture appropriation. <clears throat> Gwen Stefani likes to dabble in a lot of cultures. Do you remember when she went to Jamaica and was like? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. And I'm wondering, like, I mean, you know. That that might not be part of your comedy, but what are your thoughts on things like that? Like, you know, dressing up a certain way for Halloween. I mean, not blackface, obviously, yeah. but... I think if it's not yours, leave it alone, mm -hmm. is the way I look at it. I'm never going to dress up as any insert another culture that's not black here for Halloween, because that ain't me. Um, and I think people should do the same. Um, the only thing I have no problem dressing up as Halloween is, to be frank... As a nun, and by like, <laughs> that's, that's my only, like, I don't care, I'm doing it. Right. And if you have an issue, I'm going to be like, first, I went to Catholic school, so Irk. <laughs> I'm going to heaven, allegedly. So silence on that. And then to remember, Christianity is a colonial tool, so this is doing nothing mm. in comparison to, like, you know, Tim, well, not Tim. I know an actual Tim. I don't want to use that name. Jason. <laughs> Dressing up as, you know, insert racist costume here because that makes no sense and that's causing a lot of harm. Then what are you, like, how are you mimicking this community? And also the fact that you can put on this costume, pretend to be this person, and then become your own self the next day, that makes no sense. It's not a costume. Mm -hmm. It's an identity. It is 
a community. It is tradition for somebody, so leave it alone. And, you know, as a comedian, you started mentioning Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy. They've all had their... Oh, they definitely had their messy past. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> they had stories, but one thing they also have all had is their um, specials. Like, is this something you're seeing yourself doing at some point? Oh my gosh, if I would... That is a goal of mine. I've always made jokes about having my own, like having the space or be giving the opportunity to do a comedy special. Um, I hope that I'm able to grow as a comedian and grow as an artist to get to that point at some point in life, but definitely on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. Like if y'all want to do it for me, gladly. But yeah, that would be a goal. That'd be a really fun goal. Yeah, no, I freaking love specials and uh, one of the ones I saw recently, I love is Dion Coles. Uh, it's funny, hilarious. I also saw Travis's. Mm -hmm. And yeah, dude, it's funny. He is hilarious. <laughs> so um, I'm going to let you go with this question, though. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a kid watching there, and they're like, uh, you know, I think I'm funny. Mm -hmm. I want to do what Trina is doing. Mm -hmm. I want to be not the real gay, you know, but kind of in that sphere, what would you tell that person? Real funny person. That would be their Instagram tag. Right, so okay. Again, taken. Um, I would say do it. I would say write it down. Write your jokes down if you want. Um, go to that open mic night, um, whether it be an open mic night for comedy or just like, it's just open mic and give it a try. I think we're all kind of funny in some way, shape, or form. And even if it just happens once and that's it for you, at least you did it. So mm. I say just do it. Wow. Yeah. Trina, super grateful you came in today. <laughs> Thank you so much for the time. And then I know you have a show. Do you want to plug your show? Yes. So the show is happening on January 27th at the um, Dark Side of Comedy. And it's called The Fuzzy. It's going to be an all-woman and non-binary show. So if you want to see comedy that's not typical, come out there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Oh, 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 oh,